Hello everybody, this is MJ100K. Today I am answering a question that I received in the comments from my video, How to Become a Mechanic Without Going to School. And the question was, does this information apply to diesel technicians? And how do I feel about diesel in general? So let me answer the question first. The information in my video applies to diesel technicians except for when I said that you should practice on your own car or on friends' cars. For diesel engines, the fuel pressures are extremely high. So that is not something that you want to be messing around with. That's not something that you want to practice on. What you have to do is you need to get the OEM factory uh, procedures for you know how to work on that system and how to diagnose it because the the pressures are extremely high and i'm going to talk about that in the rest of this video as far as becoming a diesel mechanic i think it's great in general they usually get paid a little bit more than regular mechanics so you definitely can do it, it looks like you've already done it and you've become a diesel mechanic an apprentice so just keep working hard and work smart and get the proper training don't go around practicing on the fuel system and here is the reason why i looked up some information on the internet and this is a brief that uh, a doctor wrote as far as treating people with high pressure injection injuries the injuries uh, can be very serious what you what they usually suggest is something called beridement which just basically means cutting you open to get the material out and remove the damaged tissue. So they're going to basically cut. You're usually going to get injured on your hand because that's usually where people get injured at for this type of injury. And they're going to cut you open and get everything out. And it's not a fun experience. What they were saying is usually it's uh, young men who get this injuries at work and you know, people also get uh, paint or fuel oil or fuel or, or whatever. Whatever's under super high pressure, which uh, which apparently you can get necrosis from if you get some of this type of thing in your body. Necrosis means tissue death. And also you can um, you can get a renal, renal failure from that, which is uh, kidney problems. So don't mess around. With high pressure stuff but first you might want to familiarize yourself with the way that these systems operate you could go on cummins.com and find some information there this is just basic information here about how their uh, common rail fuel pressure systems work they are rated in bar which uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later but um, yeah so here are some of the fuel injectors are very big a lot bigger than gasoline engines and operate from 1600 to 2200 bar so what is a bar that's not a place where you're going to go to get drinks a bar is 14.5 psi so it's very very serious so for example i put in 2000 bar to trans to uh transfer it as 29000 psi approximately so here are some graphic pics of people who have had high pressure injection injuries. These are seriously graphic. Look at that. That is not a good thing. That's not a good day at work. Ouch. So, so yeah, if you go and try to disconnect, like let's say a fuel injector line and you haven't bled down the pressure properly, the, the fuel is just going to shoot out and it's going to shoot directly into your skin. And the only way the doctor is going to be able to to fix you is to do that beridement. See, just a little puncture. But, you know, diesel fuel is not supposed to be in your body, apparently. So it just destroys everything when it gets in there. You know, diesel fuel or paint or even water is not supposed to be in there. And if you don't get it treated very quickly, it'll quickly spread. And you see those black parts on, a, on that guy's hand? That is the necrosis, meaning tissue death. And once your tissues die, they can't bring them back. They just got to cut them off. Like, let's see, like they can't reattach them. They just cut them off and they're, they're done. 
So even you get a little hole like that, you have to go to the emergency room qu as quickly as possible. See, this is just very serious. I don't put this on here just to scare you. Well, I'm trying to scare you, but I'm trying to scare you into doing the right thing, which means you have to use the OEM procedures, you have to get training, and then you can work on that type of uh, fuel system for diesel engines. And, you know, you can do it. This, this doesn't happen every day, but when people are not careful and they don't use the right procedure, uh, they can get in trouble and uh, things could go wrong. I have seen mechanics with fingers missing. So here we go. So here's, you could go on Cummins' website and look around. They have a generator. They make generators, big old giant. Look at that. Look how big that is. Electrical generator. Uh, this technician I used to work with when I was an engineer at Cummins, he, uh, he would go out and fix the prototype engines that I was in charge of. He once had to go to Brazil to fix a generator that was for a hospital that was like out in the middle of nowhere. Like they didn't have uh, regular electricity. They had to have a diesel generator. So, so yeah, learning how to fix these things is actually very helpful to the world and to people in general, uh, to people's lives even. You know, they're not, they have engine, they have technicians over there in Brazil, but none of them could figure out why this engine wasn't working. But they flew out uh, this guy I worked with and he fixed it. So, if you could be that guy, I mean, you're really, really very valuable person to the world and to the company, and you'll be paid well and save your money, invest it, buy a house, all those fun things. So, yeah, you can uh, you can sign up to get a Power Magazine from Cummins just to learn more. Cummins, they're also making uh, batteries now. They're st starting to electrify so, you know, the new technicians, you got to keep up. You got to keep up. You want to be the best. You want to be able to fix anything, not just repair, but diagnose. So uh, the person also asked me, how do I get these uh, ASC certifications, which are great on your resume? What I would do, or what I used to do is uh, get these uh, training, ma training manuals. And they have questions in there that are similar to the ASE tests. It's usually technician A says this, technician B says that. Are they both right or are neither of them right? So I would take about a month and I read through the whole book and make sure that you can answer all the questions and understand why these are the answers. There's also a vocabulary section. And... Uh, these, these manuals are very, very helpful. Um, I like to get the Motor Age one, but they make other ones. I think if you could get the Motor Age and uh, they make other ones too, if you could master both of those books, you usually would be ready for the test by then. And then you go and take the tests in person. It's usually about 50 or 60 bucks for one test. And you pass it, and then you get a professional certification that you can put on your resume. And you have a professional certification number for that uh, particular area of expertise. If See, what I did, I did mostly car certifications, but you can do, they have diesel ones too. And uh, yeah, this L1, this is a really good one. Advanced engine performance for those really complicated problems. So, and if you're going to diesel, I would suggest getting a book like this too, Hydraulic Systems for Mobile Equipment. You don't have to get this one, but I looked at uh, This one looks pretty good. For these big giant pieces of equipment, bulldozers and dump trucks, they're going to operate on hydraulic pressure to move all the crane stuff around. And once you're able to fix that type of thing, you are on a whole nother level. You, the only techs I ever met that made over a hundred grand a year where the ones that work on those giant pieces of equipment, those equip that equipment costs half a million, a million dollars. And they need that stuff to fix, to mine and make buildings, all type of things. So, so yeah, you go on the website, you click on there and then you go to create my ASE account. You know, they're not giving me any money to say this, but I truly believe that this helps you get jobs 
So boom, you make your little profile study. Then I would usually take one or two at a time. You take them in person. Like I said, it takes to cost about 60 bucks. And you are going to be super strong. Your resume is going to be very strong because you're going to have experience uh, to my friend who has a job now and certifications. And you're going to be able to knock out the competition because you're going to be the best on that stack of resumes, 30, 40 high. Yours is going to be at the top. You go in there, you do your interview and you get the job. You're going to be baller status, macho man, Randy Savage level. And if no, and if the places you want to go in the future don't hire you, you can go and and uh, go to college and and finish those classes. It'll be super easy by then. The cream is going to rise to the top. It doesn't matter whatever obstacle they give you, you're going to overcome it. So anyway, thanks for tuning in and have a good one.